Hello and thank you for joining me. Today I'm in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest and it's right on the border of the Mount St. Helens National Monument. So I'm, um, it's about 6.30 in the evening and I'm getting ready to make my dinner after I found my campsite. And I'm gonna get up early in the morning and catch sunrise up on Windy Ridge. So Windy Ridge is uh, the end of <laughs> the end of Road 99 going into the National Monument, and it's a little over 4,100 feet, and should be spectacular views. So I want to be up there for sunrise, and hopefully things work out for me with some rosy glow on the hillsides. You can see Rainier and Hood from up in that area too, but I've never actually been on Windy Ridge, so let's do some exploring together. All right, so it's supper time. I picked up something frozen from Safeway, roasting vegetables. I'm gonna saute them up in the pan here. Now, last time I made a comment about I only use bamboo on my cast iron. I need to clarify that. I only use wood on my cast iron. And the reason is because a metal edge can damage the season on a piece of cast iron. So any kind of scraping action, you know, you're taking off some of that seasoning. So I don't know, call me a snob about it, but I only use wood. more liquid than I expected in there. It's been sitting in my cooler and it thawed out. It came out of the frozen aisle. So we'll see. I'm sure I can burn a lot of that off. This is taking a little longer than I'd like to reduce. So I'm going to have to throw a general purpose thickener like couscous into my food container. A little box of couscous wouldn't take up much space and it'd sure solve problems like this. Anyway, I put a little salt, pepper, garlic powder down. And this should do a pretty good job of filling my empty spot, but I also have some chips and hummus that I think I'll probably dip into. Ha! Hummus dip. Ha ha! I'm quite the jokester. There you go. The liquids have reduced. And I'm hoping that the vegetables didn't get too soggy while they were in there, but we'll find out. They've still got enough crunch. It's very tasty. A little bit buggy out here tonight. So there's chunks of sweet potato, cauliflower, broccoli, and onion. And it's got some spices on it. It's for roasting, roasting vegetables. Works pretty good in a fry pan too. Gotta love easy when you're camping, right? All right, so I'm gonna finish off my dinner and I'll give you a tour of the SUV later. When I clean my cast iron skillet after I'm done, I use a little Dr. Bronner's, usually just a rag, but I do have this scraper here in case there's any bits and bits and pieces left over that I've got to get rid of. And then put a fresh coat of olive oil onto it. Wipe that around with a rag. 
there you go. We're ready for next time. Tonight I'm gonna have an after dinner cup of tea. sit around here, eat some dried prunes, <laughs> and have a little tea. I'm also, since I'm going to be getting up very early in the dark, um, I'm not going to make coffee in the morning. So I'm, I've got one of these Starbucks via the French roast, and I'm going to put it into a kombucha bottle that I was using today. There you go. And I'll have this waiting for me in the car for my morning drive. You see, roughly about 20 miles. That should take care of me, and then I'll make a cup of coffee later on. All right, then. So everything is cleaned up, packed up, and I want to show you just what I've got going on here. So I've got a few things on top. I've got my chair and my... Um, little folding patio table up there. And those are bungeed in, easy access. The other things, the rug, the ARB room, and there is an additional kind of shower bathroom structure. Those are along for glamping just in case I get the urge. They'll probably just stay tied to the rack because it's so much easier just to sleep in the car. Anyway, let's take a look. So the bed is set up. Now, I don't know that I've shown you this before, but I've got, I had a 75 inch wide mattress topper, and that's maybe an inch, inch and a half tall, something like that. So I cut it into three 25 inch sections and stack them. And that makes a pretty comfortable mattress. I've got a fleece on top of the foam I've got the sleeping bag unzipped. I don't like the confined feeling of a sleeping bag, so I tend to sleep with it loose. And then the army blanket over the top. And, you know, this army blanket and me go way back. It seems like I was born with it. <laughs> I've had it so long, I have no idea where it all came from. But, you know, something like that was on my cot when I was in the Marines. So the water source, I have a... Two gallon jug, easy access. I refill it with the seven gallon jug. This back here is my one and a half gallon sprayer that I use for taking showers and generally washing off when I get the opportunity. Otherwise I just stink. My camp stove is tucked in back there. There's a couple of tarps um, just in case. And also I put them underneath the ARB room. And tucked down into the tarps, there's a small axe and my uh, little uh, shovel that I use for digging cat holes and whatnot. This is a container full of food stuff. This is my collapsible basin that I use for the kitchen and general washing up. Uh, my coffee pot. This is, of course, my kitchen bag. It has all of the... Um, has my skillet and all the utensils and spices and paper towels and olive oil and all of that in the middle section. On one side, there is the utensils, and on the other side, there is uh, plates and bowls. All right, moving along. This side. I've got my flip-flops ready to go for that call of nature in the middle of the night. My pillow from home. I always bring my pillow from home. I love my pillow. Anyway, let's see. Oh, spare gloves, spare grocery bags, things like that. This is my slatted um, camping table. A, what do you call it? A slat, collapsible, you know, something like that. You can get it online for like 30 bucks. All right, passenger seat. I keep my clothes bag. 
sweater and vest loose and ready to be grabbed. These are the cushions for my lawn chair, some extra towels, washcloths, things like that. And down here I've got the, uh, you know, stuff for glamping, you know, that just in case stuff. There's a full size inflatable mattress, um, jersey sheets. I love the, the soft <laughs> cotton. Oh yeah. And then tucked back down in there, there's a, uh, oh God, there's a, you know, one of those pumps. Yeah, there you go. All right, here we go, around the other side. There's my Lucy light, always keep it in the dashboard charging. All right, let's start back here. Easy access to the cooler. Down here, more grocery bags, miscellaneous. I use a lot of those plastic grocery bags for garbage bags, of course. And here's some extra food, and I'll just keep that. How about this? I do like to keep the driver's seat open just in case, and the key's handy. If you need to make a quick getaway, you don't want anything in your seat, and you want your keys handy. All right, so there's my instant coffee for the morning. There's my reading material for the night. And there you have it. That's the tour. This is a real nice camping spot. Dispersed camping. I love dirt roads. Take you away from the hustle bustle and get you into the quiet. Hope those clouds pass over and aren't bothering me in the morning. Sweet. All right. I'm going to tuck myself inside and I will see you in the morning. Well, good morning. I set the alarm for 4.30 and ready to roll. When I went to sleep last night, there were stars, and now there aren't stars. So there must have been a cloud cover that moved in, and I hope it doesn't mess up my plans too much. I hope it doesn't obscure the mountains. But I'm taking off, and I will head up that way, and we'll see what we see. I'll check in with you in just a little bit. Well, I've been driving in and out of the clouds, but it looks like I'm gonna have a pretty unobstructed view, actually. And I wish I had Set the alarm for about a half hour earlier. <laughs> Dog got it. Missed my timing. But there's starting to be some spectacular vistas opening up. And the clouds hanging over the valley. Very cool. So this is a Smith Creek view. clouds that I've driven out of. Way off in the distance there. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. That's Hood right there. And over toward the east where the sun's coming up. That's Adams. Well, I made it over to Windy Ridge and it turned out that Smith Creek is actually a better view. So I'm hanging out inside. It's very windy out there and cold. <laughs> windy Ridge, go figure. So just waiting to see if the rising sun will paint the mountains. I sure hope it does. Fingers crossed. It was totally worth it to get up early and come down here for this. Sun crested the ridge over across the way about 548. But I was looking at something cool going on down here. Sorry for the wind noise. I'm going to take a time lapse of this 
cloud fall that's going on over here. All right, so this has been a great time. I don't know about trails around here. I don't have any maps. Everything is closed. Can't get any information from the Forest Service or the National Parks or anything. So I think I'm going to end this one here and I'm gonna drive north and head towards Rainier, me and my rooster comb. So anyway, thanks for joining me and I'll see you on the next one. Take a hike.